instruments that, that sound sort of uh, similar uh, for, for, for sort of working with it? Or is it four tea times? I mean, that phrase was cho chosen fairly carefully for, for what looks like a straightforward <laughs> phrase, but can potentially have multiple different meanings uh, for it to, to sort of work on. It can be sort of complicated in that, in that sort of speech recognition, but they've got to put it into some sort of <coughs> context uh, for it. So they've got to match what you say, uh, all these possible ones, against your sample utterances. So whilst you may have sort of put something in there, it might come over and say, well, it actually can mean any one of these five or six phrases, <coughs> depending on the context. If I said, yeah, 40 times, and you just said to me, how many times do you want me to write this out? And I said, 40 times, that's okay. Uh, if, I, if I said, uh, well, here's some sugar, and you said, what's that for? And you said, well, that's for tea times. And it's the same sort of sound, but according to the context, it can be different things. So the sample utterances are the things that you're expecting to see. So you might say uh, in this fact intent that there's, these are the likely things that people will say. Uh, give me a fact, give me a space fact, tell me a fact, give me a fact, give me a space fact, give me, tell me trivia. All sorts of ways of saying, asking for the same thing. But people tend to use words in different orders, they tend to use alternative words when they're asking for things. So you're going to try and pick up all the various training data for each intent. All the bits about, in this case, getting a new space fact. The different ways that you predict people would say something. Now this is why you often have to go back to the model. You, you sort of tell it to do something and then you have to keep going back to it to uh, add some new phrases uh, in there to, to work along with. So, an intent it's like a general idea of what you want to do. Stop intent, or help intent, or cancel intent. These are the sort of ones that have to be built in, but you might have an intent like um, the, well, the previous one. So it's about um, this get new facts intent. The intent is really what overall you're wanting to do, and then you've got a phrase that might trigger it off. So in order to have a stop intent, you might have a few things like stop, cancel, quit. They're all sort of meaning the same, the, main, the same sort of thing. Now, those are the ones that they require you to put in so you can stop the thing, and then you build up your own intents yourself. So you're building up these intents, you're building up a, a request, <coughs> essentially, that when you say something, it's being passed across to uh, the voice recognition, working out what you say, working out what those actual words are, and then tying that into what it thinks one of your intents is, according to which area you're working. So if you're working in Uber, uh, give me a ride to Starbucks might mean one thing. Working in some other intent might mean something else. So it all depends on the, the situation you're in, what a particular phrase means. So that's why when you're talking with it, you have to say, ask Uber to do this. It puts it into a certain content, and then it knows who to send that request off to, based around the intent that it's chosen out of all those phrases that you uh, supply. That intent goes across as, as a JSON request. It goes from one side to the other one as a, as a JSON request, and so long as you're a web service, you can cope with a uh, string of JSON going in, then you do whatever you want, and as I say, then generate the, the response coming out of it. The example that's given in the uh, session you're doing, as I, yeah, it's written in Python, you can write it in, in Node, you can write it in Java if you like, whichever one you like, so long as you can deal with incoming data coming in in JSON uh, for it. So it's basically streaming text-to-speech, text to streaming audio, you can sort of uh, you can have these things winning as text stream as well. And you've got these, as I say, sort of utterances that you build in. Inside your code, you've got the basic ones, and you've got your own intent. Get a fact intent. 
or get a helping set. They're built on top of the default Amazon ones. You've got your own intent to be built in uh, for it. They're the connection between the, the, the sort of two. And what you intend getting, what you, what you end up with, is um, a string of JSON that gets sent off to that web service. So you send off uh, something to the web service saying, uh, okay, there's something in called an intent request. Here's who it's come from. Here's the date. Uh, here's what the intent actually is, right, and what they what they've said uh, for it. So it's sending across. Amazon uh, voice recognition has, has built up that string as to what somebody said, and then passing that out to your web service as to whatever the, the, the sort of connection is, as a sort of JSON string. So at the other side. <laughs> You'll have some code. There we've got uh, that underlying one, get new fact intent. That's the thing that it's identifying. Saying so get new fact intent. The slot will hold uh, some sort of variables. Uh, but in this case, it's just going to get a random number and generate a, a random fact, I think. Right. But that's the thing, that, that's the way of invoking that remote procedure. Right. Now, this. And again, I know I often talk about the enterprise programming people. This is exactly what we were talking about just in the lecture an hour ago, about how to invoke something uh, where you, where all you need to know is what the name is and what parameters to pass. This doesn't use an HTTP type call where you're passing parameters. It doesn't use REST. It doesn't use SOAP. It passes over as a JSON string that sends this off to wherever your web service is. And at the other end, they've got to pick up this bit of data and identify there that get new fact intent is the method to call and some of the parameters in, in, inside it. So as I say, yeah, there's, a, there's a, some built-in intents that, you're, that you've got to have on uh, to it. Certain ones that are required if you're going to get a certified one and a lot of uh, recommended ones to, to sort of put in there uh, for it. <coughs> the, the endpoint needs to receive and react to that. So the only thing that they, that what, what um, Amazon is saying for this web service, <coughs> it's got to have an interface written in JSON uh, for it. It must be internet accessible, obviously. Uh, and it uses uh, a secure HTTP link to get there. It doesn't use the, 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 the standard HTTP calls, or SOAP calls, or S1 calls. Uh, it's just got to have this secure sockets layer, which is 443 instead of your 480, uh, whatever it is. But so long as you can set up a web service running on that port uh, for it, and you can cover the JSON coming in, then you sort of maintain a session over on that web service about that conversation that's going on with the device, because Amazon will be passing on to you all those utterances that they've said. So the request describes that user input, and the session is the information about the, the current uh, request going on. That's that piece of sample data that's going through uh, for, for it. Now, I know this can be clear as mud in many cases with... Um, you know, when you start to look behind what supposedly is a fairly simple thing. But it's not too bad once you've actually written one or two of these skills. It's just a question of getting used to the process that's involved. Because when it's going back as well, you need to set out what, what the response is. Uh, or if there's some sort of graphical response or, or thing to remember about uh, where you're up to. Whether or not this thing's sort of ending. So going back, so if we're to sort of opening up the space, the, the space facts, that's your launch request, and the Alexa exit is the end of that, if it's a, if it's a sort of collect, collection of them. We've got the bits there about an intent request for get new facts intent, because you ask space facts, so it's identified, you'll need to sort of tie over that space facts with a, a fact intent. And we've got versions like, uh, depending on how, how, how you want to set the conversation going, uh, present the data to the user, perhaps sort of ending the conversation. You might want to say, just tell 
and then the speech output uh, for it. So that just says, okay, here's the answer. And, uh, ask you to put me a right to Fallowfield and get a message, yes, it'll be here in 10 minutes. It'll be five pounds or something like that. Uh, whereas ask can give you some speech output and then perhaps sort of prompt, that's where it doesn't understand you. So it's gone all the way to the web service and it's come back saying, we've mm, not quite got enough information there. Can you just re-prompt? And so uh, you'll get asked to do something <coughs> extra. So this ask and tell, they are sent back to this particular device to prompt the user uh, for it. So you emit and ask, and then what's your, uh, what's your sort of message, if you like, uh, for it? So we've got there, I mean, actually embedded there in the, uh, the JSON is whatever that fact is, you'll, you'll sort of have it training after it. <coughs> now, I know this is, as I say, only a very rough sort of uh, overview of it. The thing to do is to get in there and start building uh, some of these, to get onto that sort of quick start, have a work building one where it's based on an existing uh, service that you can use, and then start writing your own service. Amazon have got a pile of things to get started on this, ranging from the five-minute dip your toe in the water, at least use some existing ones to, to work.